<laughs> Hello there, and welcome to a updated tutorial for um, how to do the 80% credits work uh, on English. I've been working really hard on this. Um, I know I already have a tutorial out, but um, I've changed some stuff to make it better. Um, so this is going to cover those changes as well as just the other stuff that's still the same. So that way this video can supersede the old one. Anyway, let's get started. Um, so I'm actually going to do all of this on a vanilla um, North American cartridge this time. Uh, <laughs> we'll see if how good I am at teaching without having the memory watches up, but um, it should make this video a little bit shorter. Okay, um, so first off is file names. So these two file names uh, will work. Um, and there's also quite a few other things you can do that will work. Um, so like, if you're a streamer that has viewer file name incentives, um, there are like a few different ways you can tweak these file names to um, have them still work, but like be different. So one thing is, uh, well, first off, currently I have my actual save file that has one mask, Deku mask, um, in slot one. It doesn't have to be, it could be in slot two if we wanted. Um, but yeah, what matters is which one you're playing on and which one is just a blank file that you just created. Um, so yeah, this one would be the blank file and this one is the one I'm playing on. Um, but they could be in the opposite slots, like the, one, the other one could be in file 1, and this one could be in file 2, and so on. Um, but anyway, uh, so stuff that can change. Um, for the file you're playing on, uh, 8 kit, the first half, that can also be... You can replace the I with a lowercase q, and that will also work. So then it's like 8k cutie, like 8,000 cuties. Um, so that one will work. And then the other thing you can do to make a difference uh, is the second halves of the file names are interchangeable. So I could have file 1 be 8kit CD0Q, and then I could have file 2 be 84AQ26GZ. Um, all that matters is that you have both of those two second halves, to, like overall. Like at least one file has one of them and the other file has the other one. Um, but it doesn't matter which file the second halves go on. The first halves, so like 8kit and 84aq, those do have to be on their respective files. So 8kit or 8k cutie needs to be on the file you're actually playing on. And 84aq needs to be on the file that you just created, like the empty blank file. Um, and one more thing, if you're new to Ace Credits Warp, um, you will need this file too. Um, it needs to be deleted and recreated every time you reset the console. Um, now for us, we only need it on the final reset. So like when we reset on top of the clock tower. Um, but yeah, since I have reset my console since the last time I used this, I will need to recreate this empty file here in order for this to work. Um, and I have to do CD0Q for the second half because of what my first file is named. Um, but yeah, there we go. So that's created, and now we can go ahead and start this file. So yeah, we're just gonna go to East Clock Town here, and we're gonna leave. And we need to farm for some bomb drops. Um, we need a bare minimum of two. Uh, we hard require ten bombs. Uh, so if you get two, and you do everything perfectly, then you'll be fine. But I really recommend getting three, because doing everything perfectly is kind of hard. <laughs> So, yeah, I definitely recommend at least three. And, you know, if you got four, that's even better. It'll give you even more room for error. Um, I'm not getting very good luck here. Um, 
So once you finish farming these, which I have not done yet, um, you're going to want to clip into Observatory uh, through the corner by this grotto that I just fell in. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do that. I actually showed like all of them on my original tutorial, so I'll link that in the description. It's not going to be as helpful for me to go through them since in this tutorial because I don't have memory watches since I'm playing on an original part right now. Um, so some of the stuff about like which angles work for that clip isn't going to be as useful. Um, but I I'll still do a couple demonstrations, but I do recommend if you're curious about like the intricacies of how to do that clip, you check the old tutorial. Um, I have not got a single bomb drop. This is the worst luck ever. <laughs> Where are all the bombs? Oh my god. I'm getting trolled so hard right now. Okay, there's a bomb. <laughs> this is absurd. This is truly absurd. So yeah, this would have been a reset um, <laughs> if this was an actual run. Where's all the bombs? Please. All right, I guess we're in another loop. <laughs> I'm very sorry about this. I'm getting very bomb trolled today. I saw that that was blue and got excited. Okay, there's... There's two bomb drops, so... We can do this with two, but it requires you to be perfect, and there's one part in particular... One of the bomb conservation strats that's really hard to do. Okay, there we go. Alright, sweet. So I'm, I'm full on bombs now, so I can go ahead and show... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show this clip. So, there's a lot of different walls you can target to do a clip through here. Um, this one works. Uh, this one does not work. Uh, these two will work. This one does not work. And then... This works. This works. Um, everything on the rock wall works. So, like, here or farther down will also work. Um, I'm just gonna do it here, though. So I'm just going to do a Hest clip here. There we go. Nice, so now I'm in here. Um, there's other ways to get in here though. Uh, and like I said, you can check out the other video for details, but one of them that doesn't use a bomb. Oh wow, that doesn't even... Okay. Um, there's a Deku flower right there. You can just go over there as Deku and use Deku to come in. Um, if you don't like Hessing, you can get that same angle that I got by, like, targeting the fence on the outside and doing 12 ESS right. Um, so, like, this is a bad example because I'm on the inside, but... Basically, I would end up facing somewhere like this direction. Um, and yeah, so 12 ESS right when you target that, whether you're doing that in a Hess format, or whether you're just getting that angle and then doing a recoil flip slash side hop slash super slide through this corner. Any of those will work just fine. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get on to the heat unit. So we're gonna come in here. And we're gonna get to the bottom. And we're gonna break the pot in the back and grab the drop. Like that. <laughs> Okay, next, um, I'm going to do a little setup here just to get a nice position. Um, so I'm going to target, so Link's head is like kind of between these two lines. And then I'm going to do two side hops left. 
and then I'm gonna put on Deku Mask because we're gonna shoot an arrow here. Um, so I'm gonna shoot an arrow, and then I'm gonna take off Deku Mask, um, turn human, and hold B, so that way human will um, start to charge a spin attack. And um, at that point, we will go through the plane with that. So let me demonstrate. There we go. Um, and hopefully you were able to hear that audio cue that I use. It's when you hear the fire crackling back here. Um, that means that you've loaded this area. And the goal is you need to hear the cracking before you hear the bubble pop. Um, next is you're going to pop that balloon. And you're going to wait for all the smoke and stuff to go away. And then you're just going to go back through. Okay, cool. Um, so next, we're going to line up here again. This is just a very good spot to line up. Uh, drop a bomb, side pop twice, uh, turn Deku, and then when the bomb explodes, press Ocarina. Like that. And we're going to play Inverted Song of Time. Um, we're going to hit yes to this prompt, and we're going to mash through the cutscene, because that is what's actually allocating. Uh, when we mash, it causes a memory leak, and we're using the memory leak to our advantage. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hit A, and then we're going to mash A and B. Um, and then once the mashing's over, I'm going to hold B to start charging up the Deku Bubble. Uh, press and hold target to target, obviously. And then we're just going to side hop through this plane while still holding the bubble. Um, you don't have to do it this way, I just find this way the easiest. So anyway, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So mash, 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 mash. Hold B, and then side hop, and then once we go through the plane, we can let it go. Or you don't have to let it go, you can just let it pop naturally, that's fine too. Um, cool, so that was that part. Um, next we are going to, um, um, like, approximately over here. So you see this mark in the wall where it's like the, um, where you could line link up in the middle of it again? Uh, do to the right of that, so like, more like here than here, if that makes sense. Um, so basically I have like the left side of Link's head, kind of where the second vertical line is. And then we're going to do two side hops. Um, and then ESS kind of that direction, and we're going to play inverted sun design. All the CSS and position setup I'm doing, I just find that it's more convenient. All that actually matters is the allocations themselves, so not like side hopping or anything like that. So like stuff like inverted sun of time, arrows, uh, Deku Bubble is Arrow, by the way. Um, they're the same thing. Um, or bombs, or charge spins, or like popping balloons, or breaking pots, that, that sort of stuff. Um, but the rest of this just makes it easier. So anyway, we're going to do the same thing where we mash through this. Um, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to charge and shoot an arrow. And then after we shoot it, we're going to become human. Um, face to the left, so that way we're targeting the wall of the tunnel, and then play inverted sauna time. So I'll demonstrate that really quickly. Okay. And you can see that bubble still hasn't popped, which is good. Um, okay, so after we mash through this inverted sauna time, what we need to do is we need to drop well, not drop. We need to pull out two bombs before the bubble pops. Um, so, like, for instance, pull one out, shield drop, pull out another one. Then the bubble can pop and we'll be fine. If we drop it first, that's also fine. Um, we just need to get both bombs out before the, uh, before the, whatever it's called, the bubble pops. So, I'm going to mash, um... And then once the mashing's done, I'm going to target, so that way it's easier to shield drop bombs. And then I'm going to shield drop two bombs. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So mash. Bomb. Oh, whoops, I did three there. So yeah, that's not going to work. Um, so I'm going to have to reset that up. That's fine, though. I have plenty of extra bombs. Okay. 
So, um, the inverted sauna timer allocations are permanent, so we don't have to redo those. So what I'm just going to do is arrow um, two bombs, and then the arrow will pop. Just the door. Okay. And then um, the next step is... Uh, or wait. Okay, so... Sorry, one second here. So, um, I've dropped the two bombs, and now this next step, the reason I have pop and then like an ampersand I saw is those can happen in either order. So if it, if the pop happens first, that's fine. If it doesn't, you can just go play I saw and it'll pop afterwards. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and play I saw. Okay, the, the bubble popped, which is good. That's what we want. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to pull out a bomb. The reason we're doing that is which that arrow that just popped, we can fill up the hole that it has in the heat by just pulling out another bomb. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to pull out a bomb, uh, walk back through the plane, and this is the part where it gets really tricky if you're trying to conserve bombs because what we're going to do is that bomb that we're carrying through once we're through to the other side, we're gonna let it explode. And we're gonna, um, the explosion is gonna create smoke and the smoke is something we need to allocate. So basically you can use the same bomb, uh, both as a bomb in hideout and as a smoke in observatory. Um, so I'm gonna try to do that and it requires standing in a pretty precise spot. Um, in order for everything to work out. I'll show you where that spot is if I miss it, but I'm just going to demonstrate right now and we'll see. Um, so unpause, pull bomb, and then enter observatory. Okay, uh, I need to go further left. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this here, but um, do you see where Link is relative to the textures on the wall? This is a pretty good spot to be. Um, ideally, you want him to be, like, the right part of his arm to be lined up with the black line. Um, but this will also work. It's just, it's going to put you a little bit closer to the loading plane after the bomb explosion hits. The goal is we don't want the explosion to knock us into the loading plane. So as long as that doesn't happen, we're fine. And as long as we don't go too far right, because um, what we're going to do is once the smoke happens, we're going to drop two bombs and do a charge spin through the plane. Um, this bomb conservation strat, by the way, is also the fast strat. Um, you actually will lose time if you can't get this, um, because you're going to have to wait for another bomb fuse. Um, so, like, for instance, if I wasn't in a good spot right now, I would just let this bomb blow up, completely wait for the smoke to disappear, and then I would pull out another bomb, let it explode in my hands, um, and then she'll drop two bombs and do a charge thing. So yeah, that was a lot of words. Let me just demonstrate it now. Um, so we're going to let this explode, drop two bombs, and then do a charge thing through the loading thing. So let's go ahead and do that. Good. Just like that. Um, so yeah, if I wasn't able to conserve that bomb, um, that would require you to get three drops instead of two. Um, because that one I'm counting on conserving in order to make this work with only two drops. And with only two drops, you also have to not clip through the fence, not use a bomb to clip through. So you'll have to either use Deku to get in, or you can Hess up a real bomb shoe to get in. Um... But yeah, anyway, that was that part. Uh, as you can see, that part is very, very quick. Everything happens really fast. Um, so that's why I paused to explain stuff. Um, and then the next thing is uh, we're going to do, we're going to drop two bombs, or not two bombs. Um, you can do two bombs. Uh, so this next step, it says two arrows and do an inverted on the same. That works. Um, you could also do one arrow and one bomb in either order, or you could do two bombs. Um, 
you just need two of something basically um however arrows conserves your bomb count and i think it's also slightly faster actually it's probably more of a wash because you have to put on decking mask but it definitely conserves bomb count and um you at least don't have to wait for the bomb to blow up afterwards so i'm just gonna do it with arrows here um so yeah remember this is our spot to line up and hide out uh it's like this double line but like on the right of it um so we're gonna line up here and then i'm gonna ess so that i have a clear shot on my decker bubble um and then we're gonna shoot too uh the way this works is a little tricky because um the Deku shooter is very slow to recharge. So once you release the bubble, if you press bubble again right away, you're not ever going to shoot a second bubble. So you have to wait for the first bubble to get like a certain distance away from you before you press and hold B again. So I will try to demonstrate that here. Okay. Um, now notice nothing's popped yet. You didn't hear a popping sound. Uh, so we can go ahead and play ISOT. As long as it doesn't pop before we pull out Ocarina, we're fine. Um, once we hit yes, the bubbles are going to probably pop. Because for some reason, when you hit yes here, time sort of advances, but sort of doesn't. Like bubbles will advance, but bombs do not advance in their timer. It's really weird. I don't really know quite how it works, but... Anywho, so we're going to mash through this as usual, and we're going to hear the bubbles pop. We heard one of them pop. And then, yeah, the other one popped. I accidentally shot another one, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, cool. So now that we're here, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot one arrow this time. Just the same way we did last time, but we're only going to shoot one. And then um, we're going to become human and pull out a bomb. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so this is this way. Pull out a bomb, target this wall. Um, we're going to shield drop it and do two side hops, right? Oops. OK. Um, that roll was not intentional, so I'm a little behind on the bomb fuse right now. Normally, I would wait here for a little bit um, before dropping the next two bombs, just because we want to make sure the bubble fully pops. Um, but since I did that extra roll, we're going to be fine. So I'm just going to instantly shield drop two bombs. OK. Um, and then the last step is pretty precise. So when the explosion happens, we need to side hop through the loading plane before the explosion unloads. And by explosion, I mean the red and white like explosion effects, like the particles, not the smoke, which is like the black and gray and maybe sometimes white particles. Um, it should be pretty obvious, though, because you'll see a big flash. And when you have that flash, I immediately want to start side hopping right. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to buffer this a little bit. It's not super precise, but you still want to be pretty quick about it. So I'm, I'm still holding target. Wow, uh, I had more time than I thought. Okay, there we go. So there's the flash. So now that the flash has happened, I just want to side hop as soon as possible um, because I just want to get through this loading plane before the flash dies off. So I'm going to go ahead and side hop right here. Cool. Okay. Um, so now we're going to break the front pot and the rear pot. And now the heat minute is basically done. We just need to do the super slide. So we're going to get our inverted cam here. And we're going to do the super slide. I hope that I get this. <laughs> okay, I didn't get it that time. Uh, hopefully I don't take damage again, though, so I don't want to crit health. Okay. Cool. And now we're going to carry this back through the plane. And we're going to target this box and ESS right um, to about here. Uh, the visual cue, I'm going to pause just because in-game time is ticking and I, I, if the night transition happens, it's going to ruin everything. Um, so 
What I use for this visual cue is... If I were to do one more ESS turn, Link would be completely facing the camera. So I just stop one ESS turn before Link is completely facing the camera. So he's basically like a little bit down right of directly down, if that makes sense. Um, or a little bit right of, of the camera, essentially. So this is a good angle, so I'm going to go ahead and shield drop this. And then... Um, we're going to come over here, uh, walk like... Walk into this corner and stop walking target. Okay, that time it didn't work. Uh, there we go. Your camera should snap to the box like that. That's how you know you got the angle correct. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to hold into our up left notch. And then we're going to slowly rotate the stick down and to the left um, until Link starts doing a side shuffle against the wall. Um, and once he does that we are going to do a side hop and immediately let go of stick, but continue to hold target. Um, this is a new mechanic I discovered recently where it's been known for a while that on English, when you put on a transformation mask, it'll like turn you to face the camera, but unlike Japanese, it'll restore your angle afterwards. Well, it turns out it doesn't actually restore your angle. It, um, it, I mean, it kind of does, but it restores a different angle than we thought. It doesn't restore your facing angle. It restores your movement angle, and your movement angle is the angle that you just moved at. Um, so since we did a side hop, um, it's going to restore our facing angle to be facing the direction we side hopped. Um, so that is what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. So this is up left notch, and I'm just rotating down and left a little bit, and eventually he's going to side shuffle like that. So we're going to side hop, let go of stick, um, hold target still, and put on decade. And Deku's going to face the way we side hop now. And then we're going to do right ESS. Um, until... One more. Or wait, is that good? No, I think it's one more. Yeah, this one. Um, so the, the visual cue I use here is... Do you see Link's, Deku Link's elbow? It should be like perfectly in that groove on the clock. Um, between, like, the top loop and the side loop. <clears throat> so yeah, that is the visual cue that I use. And to where, like, it only goes a little bit into the middle loop. But yeah. Um, so we're gonna target. We're gonna come over here. And I like to line up, like, kinda in between this- these two lines on the brick there. And back up a little bit. It doesn't- it's not too precise, though. Um, and then we're gonna shield. Uh, keep holding target. And we're going to do that same thing where we... I'm going to just pause because the in-game time is ticking. Um, we're going to do that thing where I hold up uh, left into my up-left notch, and I just rotate down and left a little bit um, while still holding shield. And then what I'm going to do, once I feel like I have a good up-left side hop angle, um, is I'm going to let go of shield, wait for just like a split second, because it takes Deku Link a little while to get out of the shield animation. And then I'm going to tap A and immediately drop stick, but keep holding target. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. Um, so, oh, well, okay, I failed there. Um, so let me try that again. Okay, there we go. Um, if you did it right, basically you should, your stick should drop before Deku touches the ground, so that way he doesn't like start walking. Um, okay, so now we're going to take off Deku Mask to, again, face the direction that we just side hopped. And then we're going to put it right back on again because we need to do a Deku Spin. Um, and then we're going to ESS to the right. Um, and the angle we're trying to get is 0807. Um, so... If you don't know already, a ESS turn is 708 in hex decimal. That's how big it is. So we're trying to get approximately 100 in hex um, away from... Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, we're we're going to end up... If we did one more ESS turn than what we're trying to do, it would look visually to us like we're directly lined up with the lines on the floor because we'd be facing effectively straight forward. We don't want that. We want one turn before we're facing straight forward. 
So it's actually the exact same thing as with the um, with the link facing the camera for dropping the pot. That's the exact thing we want to do here. We just want to go one before Link is directly facing fully forward. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I think we need one more here. Yeah, that looks good to me. Uh, so take off Deku. Uh, pull Ocarina. Oh, crap. <laughs> so I actually crashed here, and I'm pretty sure I know why. Um, it is because I... That angle that I dropped the pot at, it looks kind of scuffed to me. I should have corrected it, um, but I was just going really quickly. Um, so yeah, that I should have done one more ESS turn with the invisible pot, and then it all would have been fine. Um, but anyway, since I crashed, uh, I do want to demonstrate this working. So we're going to try again. I'm probably just going to trim out the parts where I failed. Um... Oh, wait, did I forget to recreate the file name? Is that why I crashed? Is that really why I crashed? That would be very rude if that was why I did it. Here, that one. The good news is, again, I've crashed twice in a row, which means the heap was correct. Uh, crash when I pulled Ocarina specifically means that the heap was good. So yeah, as you can see, the heat minute for this is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, it was really bad for a long time, and I have been working very hard these past couple weeks to make it better and more consistent. And I think it's pretty consistent now. Like I'm, I failed the entire thing twice in a row, but neither of those times had anything wrong with the heat. The heat was fully correct in both. It was just, I think I forgot the file name last time. And then the first time I think I just had a bad pot angle. Bad SOA angle. So yeah, I should be fine with the rebound drops. I've noticed that I've had like a lot of extra bombs left over. Even when I kind of mess up. Come on, Blama, I'm Uh, I guess I'm still gonna go for 20 just to be safe. If I don't get it, it's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna like go back and the battle for it. Oh, sweet. Alright. Should we set here? So yeah, I'll just go in as Deku again. This pot. Drop that. And I'm over here. Set up twice. Do a bubble. First one. And I'm over here. Drop this. Wait for stuff to go away. Come back. And then over here. Bomb. And Deku. Pull up right now. On the explosion. Hmm. 
smash. Uh, hold B, press target. So help you. Um, and then we're gonna line up here. Uh, oops. My bad. That was wrong. I'm supposed to play Invertus on time before I should have all So, just go ahead and do that. Got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't have become human there. That was a waste of mass transition. I'm just gonna wait for the arrow to pop, you don't have to do that. The bomb from here. Uh, I'm too far left here. Okay, and then we're going to wait for this explosion here. There we go. Side hop. Break these two bolts. Wow, so I actually saved all my bombs this time. That's pretty cool. So that's what I mean about it being bomb perfect. Like, I did everything right that time, and I have exactly 10 bombs remaining, and I got 20 to the end. So, okay, target, and then... So that's, that is the face and the camera angle. We want one before that. That, okay, so drop it. And up here. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Okay, that's that's it. That's it. Okay. Over here. Hold out there. And shield. Get into a good stick position. Okay. Spin. Right. Let's fingers cross. There we go. That should be it. Unless I failed the heat, this is it. Okay. 
fingers crossed, we see a moon. We see a moon! Huzzah! Okay. Yeah, I'm very sorry that I failed the angle setup like three times in a row, or twice in a row. Um, but you got this. So yeah, that is um, the updated, new, improved uh, tutorial for English 80%. Um, this new stuff, which is, we get to skip the chew, which getting the chew is pretty slow. Um, moves is about 24 seconds. Um, we skip one eye slot, so that saves 13 seconds, and we save two equips, so I don't know. I don't know if that actually saves time, since you might want to pause buffer a couple things, like the explosion for the last heap set. Um, but, but yeah, basically overall, this should save like around 40 seconds. Um, so yeah, this is definitely the fastest category on English now. Um, before it was like, eh, it's about the same speed as Defeat Majora. With my last tutorial, it was like a little bit faster if you got good bomb RNG. But here, like with this, since we don't need the Chew, even if we get pretty bad bomb RNG, this is still going to be faster than Defeat Majora. Um, I predict that you could potentially get like around a... Um, like a high 25 on English, um, so like a 25-45 or 25-50 with a really good run. Um, but yeah, uh, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, have a great night. Bye!